Okay, so Jake from White Pit Threads, looking forward to finding out where you guys are at. Um, in terms of where you've got to at the moment, so that you've got two, you've got a partner? Yeah, there's um, three equity partners, myself included. Yeah. Um, one of them works full time as the head of content production. Um, I'm more operations. And then my brother is kind of like a silent director. Um, we go to him for strategy and he deals with finance and making sure we have enough re financial resources to operate. Cool. Yeah. In terms of who do you think you need to know in order to keep this thing moving along in the direction of, that you want to take it, do you think you know everyone you need to or are there certain types of people you need to still get to the table? It's a good question. Um, if, I, if, I, um, my, if my key goal would be to make exponential revenue, I would say that obviously it'd be great to have mentors, someone who can help me scale the business. But I think from where I am right now, the best person to know would be my customer more intimately. And that's because if I know them better, I could get more sales. So for example, I know general things about them like they're 18 to 34 year, years, of old, years of age. Um, they like to go out in the piss and hang out with their mates. Um, but if a, one customer buys, say, um, a shirt and a matching pair of board shorts and another customer buys 10 shirts, I don't really understand the differences between those two customers. And if I did, I'd be able to target them more effectively and create more revenue that way. So yeah, the best person, the best person for me to know would be my customer. Right. Yeah. And in terms of technical knowledge, in terms of mm -hmm. the actual knowledge you need, within the business, in terms of running a business yeah. and or the technical side of actually getting things made and supply mm -hmm. chains and stuff mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. is there any specific knowledge that you can sort of see a need to bring in? Yeah, for sure. I think it would be data analytics. There's lots of great tools online, lots of great software that I can access, but to really use them in an expert way to drive value, you need someone who knows, who loves data and understands the business, understands the product. It's a specialized job. Um, and if we had someone that could really analyze all the data and find out key things about our customers, um, I think that would be that would pay off in itself really quickly. So that would be good. But a lot of the other things like manufacturing clothing, I can outsource really easily to China. Um, so yeah, I don't really, I, I can already outsource them to my existing network. So yeah, I don't really need to bring in any new people from a production side point. Cool. Yeah. And in terms of uh, specific resources, we talk, we call them financial resources. Uh, yeah. They don't have to be money. Yeah. They can be, you know, permission from the local council could be a valuable resource. So, uh, are there any specific resources that you'd love to have more of? Yeah, I'd love to have more people. Obviously, I'm constrained by money. So the three levers for me is land, labor, and capital. We need more capital so we can scale quicker. We need more people so we can get more customers and service and new demand. And we need a bigger office space. Yep. Um, we're kind of outgrowing at the moment. So those things will grow into, um, increment, like will grow gradually as our business grows. But if I had more money, I'd be able to just turn the taps on and grow a lot quicker. But we're kind of ref yeah, we're constrained from, with money at the moment. So we talk about this idea of uh, cognitive legitimacy, mm. which basically refers to the extent to if you meet someone in the pub yeah. and they say, what do you do, Jake? And you say, I do this. Um, mm. You think that YP Fritz has that sort of taken for granted, you know, um, the fashion industry and people just sort of, I understand what you do. Easy for people to understand what you do? Yeah, kind of. If, it depends how you explain it to them. If I just said it's an online clothing store, they'd know exactly what we do. But if I said it's a vertically integrated direct-to-consumer e-commerce store, we make products and media, that'd be something that's more specialised and they have no idea what I'm saying. That's something that I would, that's, that's something that I see ourselves doing. But if I'm talking to a layman, I'll just say online retail and they would know exactly what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and in terms of society in general, you know, the, the major sorts of people you interact with, do you think society approves of what you do? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think um, we're looking at society, just looking at everyone. So customers, I would say there's no reason why they would disapprove of what we're doing. We are a clothing store and we're making products which they can choose to buy and not to buy. But um, something interesting happened. Um, I was dealing with a manufacturer in Australia because the manufacturers in China were closed for Chinese New Year and I needed to rush out products really quickly. And I was talking to an Australian manufacturer and I told her about our transparent pricing model and that is where we actually disclose our production costs on our website. And he was like, yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, why would you disclose your production costs to your customers? That's silly. He was kind of like an old school business guy. I think he's been in business for ages. And I think that 
that's something that he disapproves of from his perspective as a business owner because it disrupts the status quo. It kind of makes him look bad in comparison. That's what that was my take on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, you wouldn't think Apple would tell you that it only costs, you know, yeah. thirty bucks to make an iPhone. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but then the gap is really, really huge. Yeah. Whereas in your case, maybe you've got to make money. Yes. We like it close. So. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I can see. But that may be the old brush that's sort exactly. of exactly. You know, disappearing. Yeah. In terms of the space that you operate in, do you have a sort of a, a, a good understanding of how things change? So mm. when a new idea variation comes in and it gets rejected, um, or the status quo remains, do you get have a good sense for what's likely to work and not likely to work in that in your space? Yeah, um, I guess. It's a, re- a very good thing. You need to be aware of those kinds of things. If I could just restrain that question, with the industry that I'm in is um, casual menswear online in Australia. And so if I look at something in the, in the industry, like a new entrant to the market, like H&M or Zara, how am I supposed to know? I, I could make generalizations. If they enter the market, I could make generalizations about the effects of those entrants. But it's hard to know how those effects will affect YP threads because we're a small player. We've still got a lot of room to grow. So, I mean, what my answer to your question is you can make generalizations, but whether it's how it's directly related to your business is hard because we're still so small and there's still many, so many customers that don't know about us. If we had reached saturation in the market, then my answer would be different. Then I would say, yeah, those generalizations about the market would probably directly impact me, but at this stage, probably not. Yeah. No, that's cool, that's cool. Um, in terms of your operation environment, by that, we're talking about the things that you're directly connected to. So if something happens in, um, uh, you know, Maruchito yeah. tomorrow, like if it's flooded, okay. it's not part of your operation uh, environment. I see. So it's just like the things that you are operationally related to. Yeah. Are there specific things that work uh, against YP threats? Yes. Um. So these are things that directly impact the operations of the business. Yep. Could that include currency fluctuations? Sure. Yeah, so we pay our Chinese manufacturer in US dollars. So uh, if the US dollar increases, our production costs increases. And we don't really, our price point's really important to us, so we don't really want to pass on those costs to our customers. That would be something that impact our business. Um, I mean, we rely on third parties heavily to distribute our products, to host our website. Um, if anything was to impact them, like the weather, flood, something, or went bankrupt, then yeah, we would be impacted by them adversely. Okay. Yeah. In that same space, what are the things you think that are really working for you? What are the factors that really make YP Threads viable? Viable. Well, I think, um, okay, so we make clothing, and I also say that we make media. And the reason why that second part is significant is because it's a way for us to get cost-effective exposure in a really crowded marketplace. And one thing about men's fashion is that, or one thing about men is that they don't uh, consume fashion media, generally speaking. And we've kind of figured out a way around that by making media that's actually funny and relatable to our audience. And that's something that's working in our favor because it's not something that our competitors are doing. Um, I'd say also it's a great time to be able to run a business right now. Um, you've got lots of softwares that you can use that's quite cost effective. You can host your business online. You've got social media to engage with them. So they're the things that are working in our favor. Yeah. Cool. yeah. All right. Um, we talk about value in terms of taking you know, materials, doing something with them and creating something of better value. So yes. Value chain. Yes. We also think about value in terms of a value shop which means we're using the same set of resources but in different ways to solve different problems for different people. Yeah. And we also think about value creation in terms of a network, and that is that a, you know, like the internet mm. it makes it possible to actually really reach out and communicate in, in effective ways. So you see why why do you creating value across all of those three logics of value, or is it mainly the two? Um. Can you please repeat the three logics again, sorry? One, one is obvious for yep. you, and that is you take material and you turn it into something of great value, so yep. value chain. The network effect, I suspect you're advertising and really sort of fits into being able to reach out. Yeah. So I think the, third, the second one is the value shop, 
and that would be the extent to which you might customise things for individual people. Sure. All right, well, to understand the value that YP Threads delivers to the market, I need to know why they're buying our products. And I think they're buying our products, well, the purpose they're serving, the purpose they're trying to fulfill to buy our products is to look good, whether they're going to an event or a party or something like that. So we get raw materials like cotton, fabrics, we design it, and we've got a great product at a low price point that's good quality. So we're creating value in that way. We're also creating value for our brand. Well, sorry, through our brand. So by wearing our products, you, by association, um, look cool as well because people know, oh, that's YP Threads and you're wearing our, our product. Um, and in terms of, I don't know, like distribution, like our product is purchased online and it can be purchased anytime, 24 hours a day with really good customer service team who can deliver the product really well. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, cool. yeah. Um, to what extent do you think other people, or to what extent do you think you try to plan your development around other people winning with you as well? So this is this issue of co-action, that you know, if someone's winning oh, as a result of you yeah. interacting with them, that could be more sustainable than if you win at their expense. Yeah, um, I've, we've got a brand ambassador program, and it's um, a way for us to tap into our target market in a scalable way. And I know we could employ them, or and that way there would be a win-win. Or we we can't really afford to do that. So what we're offering them to do is to, you know give them free um, work experience exposure, um, experience working with a startup in exchange for them offering, um, I don't know, creating content for us and, and spooking the brand to their friends. And so if you've got a, a buy-in from all the key stakeholders, you've got less resistance and you've kind of like creating value out of nothing really. So. Yeah, the more value you can give to stakeholders, the more buy-in they have, and the more value you both get out, out of it as a result. Cool. Yeah. Um, do you think you've moved beyond having that sort of really short-term focus in, you know, what are we going to be doing tomorrow, to sort of more of a, you know, a more of a longer-term focus? You know, um, we we took, we try to get students to think about this stuff right yeah. between trial and error, you know, borrowing, stealing things from people. And yeah. More long-term thinking, trying to actually own assets and yeah. sort of scale things up. So, do you see yourself as having moved more towards that sort of long-term orientation? I think we're moving towards that end of the continuum. Um, we are. We've been operating for about ten to eleven months now. Um, we've got our processes in place. We're now executing those processes, and we're just looking into the future to see what are the most. Well, what can we do right now that's going to most um, affect our revenue in the in the short to medium term? So. Yeah, you kind of need to look into the future and do that. If you, were, yeah, we've kind of moved beyond the stage of looking at, oh, how we, what are we going to do next week? Because, yeah, we've got one goal, that's to drive revenue. And, yeah, we've got the process in place, so we just need to execute that. Cool. Yeah. Um, in terms of the guys that you're targeting, do you, would you see them as a fairly specialised group of, of target market, target segment? Yeah. Or do you think you really are still trying to reach out to the general male population? Um, I think I think they're general because our target market is 18 to 34 year old males who like to party, and that's probably a, a lot of the people in that set, in that age group. Um, so it's general, but obviously within that demographic, there's segments, and that's what we need to learn more about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the last question is this issue of energy. So thinking about who's doing something independent of you that you can sort of become. Aware of and yeah. trying to use your strategic advantage. If you sort of sense that there's some energy out there that you guys do tap into consciously or subconsciously? Yeah, if I understand the concept correctly, I think I've got a good example. Um, we're currently, uh, we're about to launch a um, beer pong tournament at the Caxton Street Hotel. Yeah. If I could just maybe give some background first on the stakeholders. There's YP Threads, there's a Caxton Street Hotel, and there's a beer brand called Batuta Bitter. And that's owned by um, this company called Batuta Advocate, which is a satirical Australian newspaper. Um, and they're really, they're online and they're really, really popular with our demographic. And they also own this other media asset called Queensland Euphoric Memes. So we wanted to generate exposure for our business from a low cost point. That's all, always the criteria for our campaigns. And so we pitched um, Caxton Street Hotel to host a beer pong tournament for us. Um, and in return, we would bring the crowd. Uh, a condition of that would be to put the Tudor bidder on tap um, and buy like three or four kegs. 
um, and they agreed to do that. And in return, Batuta Bidart are going to spook the uh, event to all their um, followers on their, in their social channels. So yeah, so by d just organizing an event, we've got three key players and you know, we're all working together and we're all getting value out of it. It's a good example of something. Casper's going to be there. Yeah. Whether you talk to them and so are the other stakeholders in that arrangement. So yeah, that works nicely. exactly. All right, so that, that's really good. Any uh, last uh, minute advice for the advice. guys who are going to work on your problem that you're going to share with them? Yeah. Are you looking for them to be uh, really outrageous in the type of suggestions they come back to? Are you looking for anything particular? Sure. Um, I think first and foremost, we're limited by funds. I think any solution needs to be distributed through social media. And keep in mind of our target market, which are males. And also keep in mind that social media channels are really flooded. And something needs to be different to get attention. Um, and also, I don't, I'm not open to the idea of a blog. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Thank you.